Murphy of Connecticut, a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, good morning. Good morning. What do you make of North Korea's missile test and of Donald Trump's, I would say, relatively muted response so far? Well, I, I guess I think about this in two ways. First, this is nothing new. Uh, all throughout 2016, uh, North Korea was conducting these missile launches. Um, and so uh, there's, there doesn't look like there's anything technically surprising in this particular launch. But it, it is part of a pattern. You have a number of countries, historically adversaries of the United States, who have been conducting themselves in ways as opposed to a test to this new administration. It was the Russians who began to move much more aggressively in eastern Ukraine shortly after. After the first phone call between Putin and Trump, the Iranians uh, firing off several missiles in violation of the uh, UN uh, resolution, and now North Korea. And you know, the the right response is not just about what President Trump says, but about what the international community says, and why a lot of us have been worried about the ways in which he's talked about Europe, the early fissures between the United States and China, is because we need to get all those countries to come together to both condemn these missile launches and then. And perhaps look at multilateral sanctions. Uh, so it's not just about what Trump says, it's about what kind of response he can put together internationally. And he's just not in a particularly strong position to do that right now. So the UN's going to take that up. And in the meantime, the National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn, seems potentially to be in some trouble. And Washington Post columnist David Ignatius put it this way over the weekend Michael Flynn's real problem isn't the Logan Act, an obscure and probably unenforceable 1799 statute that bars private meddling in foreign policy disputes. It's whether President Trump's national security advisor sought to hide from his colleagues and the nation a pre-inauguration discussion with the Russian government about sanctions that the Obama administration was imposing. If indeed it turns out that Mike Flynn lied to the vice president, who in turn went out and repeated that, in your mind, does he have to go? He has to go if he, in fact, lied to the vice president and most likely to others in the administration. It, it seems pretty black and white to me. Uh, and of course, the report suggests that the evidence is there for President Trump to see. It appears as if there may be a transcript of a phone call, at least one phone call that he had with a Russian diplomat. And if that's available for the president to see, uh, then if it suggests he was uh, trying to undermine Obama. Uh, sanctions, if he did lie to the vice president, then he should go and we should bring somebody into the national security cabinet who can restore that position's credibility. Meantime, the president is in a meeting right now with uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, they are on different pages on a number of issues, trade being one of them and, and immigration. We earlier put up a tweet about Justin Trudeau's reaction to when the president decided to stop some refugees from coming into the country. Uh, but immigration is definitely on everybody's mind, and, and the president's senior policy advisor, Stephen Miller, who helped write that executive order, argued yesterday uh, that the president's powers are beyond question. Take a listen. We've heard a lot of talk about how all the branches of government are equal. That's the point. They are equal. There's no such thing as judicial supremacy. Mm -hmm. What the judges did, both at the ninth and at the district level, was to take power for themselves that belonged squarely in the hands of the president of the United States. He said further, the president's authority will not be questioned, and I assume that means not by you, not by members of Congress. What did you make of that statement? I mean, I don't know what to make of that statement. I mean, that kind of rant is not helpful or productive. In fact, the Constitution makes it very clear that if uh, the judicial branch rules that an action by either the legislature or the executive is unconstitutional, then it cannot go forward. If it's somehow suggesting that the executive branch, that the Trump administration is going to push forward with these immigration bans despite what the judiciary says, of course, that would represent a constitutional crisis uh, of unprecedented scope. So uh, it's a Do little Do you see unclear. something like that potentially even happening? I, I don't think so. I, I mean, I, I think that, you know, his comments were likely out of bounds. And I think, by and large, what we've seen is the Trump administration has adhered to these judicial rulings. They have the right to bring it to the Supreme Court. I don't think they'll get any different result. But, you know, we haven't seen a signal yet that the White House is going to ignore the courts. I think they know that that would unite Republicans and Democrats against the White House if that was ever to happen. Senator Murphy, always good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Chris. Happening now in Milwaukee, a show. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.